So welcome, welcome from a lovely sunny morning here in Clue. And you'll see I've got two wing ladies, uh, Beryl and Vanessa with me today. <laughs> uh, and let's just do a quick check-in and we'll start with Barbara. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I've had a good week, generally, it's up and down, but it's been a good week. And this morning I woke up and I was feeling a little bit down and I thought, right, there's no good feeling down on a sunny day like this. So I got up, went for a walk and came back and I feel amazing. So I would thoroughly recommend walking if you are feeling a bit down. <laughs> lucky, uh, lucky how I am that I actually can walk. Um, because it probably won't be forever, but for now it works. Anyway, Wonderful. that's me. Nothing other than that really to, to say. Cool. Feeling well, grateful, actually. Feeling quite grateful. Awesome. Very glad to hear that. Welcome, welcome. Maria. Uh, can you hear me and see me fine? I'm working off my left and my iPad. Fine, yeah. Okay. Um, I couldn't have had um, a better week in the sense that I started my week with two sessions last weekend with Fiona, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. So I would have been very surprised if I'd had a bad week. Um, <laughs> it was awesome. A um, lot of um, challenging things coming up, laptop crashing again, um, major leak under the floors and in the walls and all that of my house. So circumstantially, it wasn't great and some client dramas, but I was just in a good space and moved by what was going on. So it was nice to be in that space and see things from that perspective. So yeah, that was my week. Wonderful, wonderful. And welcome, welcome. Glad to see you. Well, I wasn't here last week, but the week before I had a, a chakra clearing with Fiona. And let me tell you, it was I recommend it to anybody. Uh, as I was saying to Lee, I have been to other healers and you go for a chakra clearing or whatever and it costs you 450 rand and you get one hour and that's goodbye. And I'm not saying they're not good healers because some of them are. But this was, I couldn't believe, four and a bit hours later, I was still here, clearing things that, for the last 45 years on this earth, <laughs> and lifetimes before, and for once, I've cleared the throat chakra, I can talk without fear, um, it's, it's just been the most amazing two or week and a bit or whatever it is. Every day there's something new that comes up. Oh, I couldn't do that before. Oh, yes, I can. Even to the fact that with my cat, I communicated um, telepathically. This is it. Now I can have a conversation with my cat. Can you believe it? It's just been so wonderful to get it all out and be able to be. I, I didn't realize that I thought it was the base chakra and the heart chakra that were closed. But in actual fact, it was the throat and I couldn't verbalize what I needed to. And it was so frustrating. Um, let me recommend a clearing to anybody. You'll feel 100% better after it. It's just the most amazing experience. And thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Beryl. <laughs> yes, it was, it was uh, quite intense, uh, but it was uh, well worth it. 
Thank you. And uh, we have Vanessa here from <laughs> Joburg that's uh, going to be a Portugal citizen one of these days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I've had to, I was also not here last week because I was on holiday. <laughs> so, yes, the first Sunday I just took off. Um, I've had, obviously, a good week because I've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> I've done a lot of reading. I've done a lot of um, audible, listening to a lot of good books. And, yes, I'm just glad to be back. It's lovely to be here in this energy it feels amazing. Um, such a nice place. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs> um, so glad that I get to be here and so honored to be here before I leave. So I'll remember this session for a long time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. It's so thank nice you. to, it's like uh, I was uh, telling Beryl this whole week I've had headaches. Um, I, and yesterday it was at its worst. Still have it today, but yeah. Um, and then she said, "Oh, are you going to cancel? You know, you can cancel." I was like, "There's no way." <laughs> Vanessa is coming, and uh, okay, it's going to be special, and I will just uh, okay, see it through. It's like I must say, I was listening to one of the crown ones, and he said, okay, it's a, oh, no, crown, "No, it wasn't even the crown one. It was another one." And I said, "When we raise our frequency, we are then so." I want to say hot up, but when okay, it's like when you connect to those higher dimensions, it's like you have difficulty in sleeping um, because you, you are vibrating that at that high energy. And twice a week, I get to vibrate at that energy on the, the satsangs. And then when I have to do the video, because when I redo the video and put all the bits together, I listen to it again. And it's like I just smile through that because it just it's it's feel good energies it's it's it's, it's beautiful stuff that we put out there so um thanks for your participation because it it really makes a difference in my life and in others lives so, so um yeah um overall good i've had some sessions and like a lot more clients has been coming from um like via zoom from cape town from Joburg. so I'm very grateful for this technology to still be in touch with people all over. Um, but yes, I've been in, thoroughly enjoying my sessions uh, with Maria, with like, uh, Beryl, with the others. It's I I can see. It's especially if you take your time, you can get to the deeper stuff. In, in the beginning, when clients come to me, it's a uh, like I'm gonna say superficial because we first have to go through those layers where get the crack open and you can get to the juicy parts and heal those wounds first uh, there's uh, still the blaming and the other things and it's uh, it's not me and it's whatever but um the healings has been a lot deeper and um the guidance has been just so clear um again, it's like even with maria's session i didn't know what we're going to heal or how we're going to heal or whatever but I just got, this is what we need to do. And it would have, it, it would have never crossed my human mind to go there and to look there at the <laughs> where the problem or the issue was or where the belief system that shouldn't be there <laughs> have started. And it's like, oh, wow. I mean, I get blown away with uh, sometimes uh, what comes out and what gets cleared because it's not what is in the human conscious mind. The human conscious mind this is the problem, this is the solution, and this is where you're going to clear. And at times, they are removed from the truth. So it's, 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 yeah, it's, 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 um, so it's been very interesting, and I've been loving it. And I, I like the openness uh, that you bring to the healings because uh, that is uh, um, the extent that it gets clear things. And it's beautiful to see you guys yeah, some smiley faces and feeling better so that brings joy to my heart and i think okay did, did something right <laughs> so today we have drawn cards from the keepership of the light i'm sorry my arms aren't long enough and i'm not gonna lean forward so 
<laughs> and, uh, and this is uh, one of the things uh, that Candace bought me once. And we all drew a card for the group today. And the card uh, is uh, specifically for us and the group, but it's like that way we will tell our vantage point from the messages that, that gets drawn. So we'll start with Beryl. Mine is Diana. I'll show it, I'll, I'll send a photo of the card. And it's focused intention. Now, as I was saying um, to Fiona earlier, we are inclined to think, oh, I'll focus my attention on this. But, oh, that needs to be focused on. And that needs to be focused on. I think we need to bring our intention to one thing at a time, focus on your intention, and stick to it until you have sorted that out. Don't flip like a butterfly from this flower to the next just focus on one thing at a time. That's the impression I get for, for everyone. Okay, so Diana in the picture, she's uh, got uh, um, arrows in uh, on her back, of the bow and arrows. So, so it's like each intention that you do focus, because you can't just <laughs> shoot arrows left, right and center and think, okay, I hope, I hope, hopefully it will, it will hit something. Hopefully I will catch something good. It's like, because they say, energy flows where attention goes. Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> so it is uh, to be aware of what we set our intention, uh, what we put our attention on. Because if it is uh, what we don't want, we're going to hit it. <laughs> that is where the arrow will go. <laughs> if it's not what we want, does not shoot the arrow in that direction. And it's a, like Beryl um, reminding me that we can always say that we want something or better. Um, because uh, sometimes uh, when things go wrong, we think worst case scenario, and we should think our attention should be best case scenario. What beautiful things can come out of this. Um, if something has to go, like a laptop or something or whatever, it's, uh, it's like, okay, so this system is either working for me or not working for me, so how can I do it better? What, what improvements can it be uh, and not deteriorate? Can I just put something in? Um, I found a, a good mantra to say is open thou my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. So we need to see what we need to, the wonderful things out of what we are in, focusing on. Yes, that's a beautiful one. Also uh, put it in the, the message of the below, yeah. Which card did you draw by? I've got Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Um, it says Teacher Awakens, which it's a beautiful card. I don't know what flowers these are. I know the roses. They're lilies. Lilies, okay. This barrel has the green fingers. <laughs> <laughs> They're lilies. One would think I should recognize lilies. But I don't. Um, but beautiful roses around here. Teacher Awakens to me this morning doesn't apply to me. It applies to my teachers. Um, usually I, I've got a big thing with teaching and writing. And it's always been for me important to teach. But I think this message is for my teachers. <laughs> um, one of my teachers to, and she is awakening I mean when I listen to to her talks and to her meditations um, there's an awakening happening 
and yes, um, so it's it's a, a blessing for me to be around the teachers. Um, another teacher of mine that I yes, I'm focusing on now again um, is Eckhart Tolle. The I'm listening to the power of now, and my my partner and I we have a it's like a what do you call it a tradition where if we drive anywhere on holiday, we listen to the power of now. Um, so the drive down here was absolutely beautiful. I could reconnect to the power of now. And that's again, one of my teachers that has awakened for me again. Um, so I've been even on holiday now, I've, I've spent a lot of time listening to the power of now. And I'm getting so much of the teaching um, because I'm open to it. And it's not necessarily that I have anything to teach at the moment, but I'm open to the teachings. And if you live with the teachings, and if you live with, for example, the power of now, in your life you show people. So without even intending to be a teacher, it still shines through. Um, so I'm taking the opportunity of being taught now. And that's a beautiful place to be. Oh, very. Because uh, yeah. it's for all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, I was uh, thinking uh, about uh, this uh, upcoming life work, and I, was, I, I, I still mean to say to him that it's lifelong learning. You can, as, as a healer and as a way shower and as a teacher, you always uh, remain teacher. It's to be remaining teachable. Because life teaches you lessons, uh, your experiences teaches you stuff, um, you, you learn from other people. Um, so when you get to a stage where, oh, I know it all and I don't, I, I, I don't need anything or I don't need to read another book, I don't need to listen to others, that's where you, you sort of stifle and you stop growing. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, to allow also your inner teacher to awaken but teaching you, it's a uh, start learning the lessons that you learn from yourself. <laughs> because when I connect people in the sessions, I connect them to themselves as well and listen to the messages that their higher self wants them to know or remember. So it is, we, we've got all the answers within us. It's, it's um, just to allow that to be in a listening, a listening and receptive. And that's feminine energies. And we are so much in the doing in the, this world that, that we sometimes forget about the, um, that. So, yes, beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I drew the card uh, Lord Shiva. Um, and it's uh, about transcendence. So his message at the bottom is right, honor your inner force. Uh, steps are being given and dance with the universe. And it's a beautiful message um, because we are in the energies of transcendence. Um, I've had to focus, so my focus, the intention was what to focus on <laughs> and see what is priorities. But I had to also realize uh, that um, there's certain days that the energies flows and there's certain days that the energy just doesn't flow. So certain days of this week it was, no, you need to rest. Mm, but I need to work. No, you need to rest. Mm, but I need to work. <laughs> no, you need to rest. So Monday, Tuesday, rest. And then I saw a few clients Wednesday and Thursday and then rest again. Really? And I was trying to force course doing stuff and no, but I need to at least put something out there yeah. mm -hmm. so what no. you said to me last night excuse me interrupt <laughs> she's I was talking to her about a similar thing and she said we should be like a triangle we've got the male energy and the female energy and in the center is the balance and we need to be the balance and bring balance into our life. We cannot work seven days a week, 24 hours a, a day. It's impossible. And 
especially when you're vibrating at a high, higher level, you need to stop and balance out yourself um, because otherwise you're going to burn out. Yeah. And so, therefore, you need to stop vacation. <laughs> Yeah. Take your advice. Yes. So I was uh, talking um, about uh, the in the stellar history part three. Uh, at the end, it ended off with the the Trinity, the Father, or the masculine, the feminine, and then the uh, spirit. And and the one is um um. Say if it's a positive or negative, but then there's a neutral. Neutral is spirit. So what I've realized last night was another level to that, and it's to, to understand that if there's any uh, conflict situation, or even if we're in conflict with ourselves, if one part of us is on this side and another part of us is on this side, it's uh, to bring it together to that neutral point because when we sit at that neutral point, we are biased because spirit is biased. Spirit doesn't take sides. <laughs> yeah, we think it has to be this or it has to be this. And uh, the more they fight, uh, the more they pull, we get pulled uh, um, out of proportion on the inside. But if we can go to that neutral point and we see it and we don't, it's like, yes, you've got validation. Yes validation but see this point as well and it's to find that i'm going to say third neutral point and look from there at the whole situation holistically not just the, um, from the sides but from neutrality and many times we think no but it can either be this or it can be this and you know what there's 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 always a, another way and it's not all, we won't necessarily think in our human minds of what that is, but um, we can get things. So transcendence uh, message to me today is that as I sat outside in the garden this morning, the, the thing, the, the message that came to me today was to transcend that which we have thought or seen or perceived as dark within us. So we all have, in, the, in this, we have light and we have dark. We just make judgments. We think the one is good and we think the one is bad and whatever. But we need to transcend this back into neutrality so that we realize the one isn't better than the other one. We have both and both is appropriate we've played these roles we've played these roles and uh, it, it's now to transcend the judgments that we've placed upon that making one more superior than the other one but just the finding the balance and get back to neutrality if if we if we can just be neutral <laughs> that's uh, the most be beautiful place that we can be um because then there's allowance for everything. So there's allowance for rest days. It's not that you're lazy or there's allowance for work days. It's not that, whatever. It's, it's to, to view ourselves more in a balanced perspective. And the, the, the teachings in the, the uh, great human potential is a lot about not judging. And we're still busy with it. It's, uh, I know we've done that meditation, but um, <laughs> while we're still here, we have to just uh, fine tune and check. Uh, was there any judgments? Where have I judged myself before? Am I still judging myself? Am I judging others? Am I judging the situation? Am I, because uh, it's, I'm going to say it's learned behavior. So if you don't check in with yourself to see, oh, it's a plan, is there any part that's still playing out? um today okay yes so then let that go get back to neutral get back to no particular feeling about that so if there's feelings release it and get to oh <laughs> they're just neutrality where yes that has happened but i know long it's no longer emotionally charged in either negative or overly positive way 
Okay. So that's what I get from that. We are given an opportunity to transcend everything. And what this book also brings out is the integration. So yes, we learn certain lessons and we um, uh, are uh, applying it, but it's uh, to fully integrate that then. To see, okay, so where else can it be integrated? How more fully can it be integrated? Okay. Anyone want to say anything about the, the cards uh, that was drawn today? Yes, Barbara. Okay. I thought they were all lovely cards, and each one of them actually resonated with me. Um, Beryl's one was amazing because it's something that I'm so aware of. Um, I get very stressed out and um, when I've got a lot of things to do. And I think the reason why I get stressed out is because instead of focusing on the thing I'm doing, I'm thinking about all the things I've still got to do. And so I'm not doing the thing I should be doing as well as I could be. Um, and I'm stressing all the time because there's so much else I've got to still do. Um, so, so for me, that's what that card um, basically meant. Um, I love Vanessa's card as well because um, we can, even, even teachers can learn from each other. And, um, and I learn from all of you guys, you know, constantly. It's, um, I don't know what I'd do if, if we didn't have these satsangs and, and just and just talk about, about the things that actually matter. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. All the unimportant stuff that most people talk about. Anyway, so I really appreciate also being around you guys. And then I thought about your one with transcendence and I thought about what Vanessa said last, um, last week, I think it was, about a drone sort oh, yeah. of rising up and seeing things as they really are from a completely different perspective. And that, to me, that's transcendence, isn't it? When you, when you can transcend everything and look down on it and see it as it really is, instead of this monster thing that you're surrounded by. Yeah. So, yeah, lovely cards. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I also enjoyed the, yeah, um, Beryl's card, the focused attention, and then when you were talking about the triangle um, and the balance, there's a little, well, there's two little triangles up there on the bookcase, and I was watching them, and um, it is focused intention is getting to this point, the, the tip, the apex of the, um, because you've got this and you've got this and you're in a conflict, you're good, you're bad, you're feminine, you're masculine, and when you get to this, and then also it, it comes in nicely with um, my power of now this week, because there's past and there's future, but here, right here is now. So it's focused intention on now. And, you know, the, the tip of the, the um, pyramid is also, or the triangle, is also when you go up and transcend it. So it just all fits so, so nicely for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay, as uh, when Barbara was thinking, I was thinking, I, I made the connection of uh, the mm -hmm. intention and the now, because it is uh, to bring the attention to the now. So it's amazing how everything just comes uh, beautifully together. And I see Maria also gives a thumbs up for um, the messages relating to her, so all good. It's so nice to see Maria smiling like that, isn't it? It is, eh? Uh, it just warms my heart. Yes. It's like <laughs> it's <lovely. laughs> she's just one smile from ear to ear. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so we're still continuing reading out of uh, the great human potential, walking in one's own light, and um, the next uh, chapter that uh, we will be discussing on is how to deal with the news of wars, death, and destruction. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so I think these cards have got a far deeper meaning. So, okay, because if you just uh, read the topic and we 
got the message of okay, focus attention. How much attention do we want to give to this? And um, uh, yours was a teacher. So listen to the teachers of the masters, not necessarily what these people want to teach us uh, that we have to be in conflict with one another and that we have to kill one another and that we have to be at war with one another and then transcending these. Uh, so just with the cards, it's already transcended this message. <laughs> But we'll read and just hear what the Pleiadians have to say about this. So okay, there's a section on the, the news that we get fed, the boards and distractions, and um, yeah, the, that's it. So let's just see. And please, chip in um, anytime. <laughs> I'm going to chip in and go to the basket. Okay. Don't stop. Cool. I warned you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys. No, no problem. Okay, so the news. We would like to, uh, we would say to you that it is important to have awareness of your environment. But more importantly, what you perceive in your environment uh, shows you where your potential vibration is. And therein lies uh, uh, a whole lot. Because uh, when we're at the low vibration, the lower stuff will resonate with us. So when we're at the high vibration, we can see the, the difference on where others are at compared to where we are at. You comfortable, Maria? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. If we become aware of what is going on um, collectively, it is reflected on what is going on with you in the, the uh, microcosmic level. So for so for me, it's I, I, I can see it when I'm in a, when I'm in a when I I keep on going through shifts. My shifts uh, don't necessarily stop. I feel like. It's like when I got my shamanic name, it says a silver butterfly because I keep on transforming. I never stop transforming. I, I, I never arrived to a level. Now I've arrived. <laughs> I redefine myself. I, I go in the cocoon and I come out and I go in the cocoon and I come out. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a cycle and I, and I know it's important. It's part of my my own ascension path that I'm walking and I can feel when I was, have to withdraw and I can feel when I have to rest and I can feel when things shift and change and it's, it's, I'm going to say that, that, that's sometimes the scary part and I understand, I, I have to go through these things regularly so that I can understand and have empathy for what clients are going through. But sometimes I forget how it feels because I've been there, done that, but if, if it's not, in the foreground, and then I, 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 I forget. So when it, when you go in that cocoon stage or, or a, a little bit of a dark night of a soul, whatever, you just feel so lost. And you want to grab onto something. You want to hold on to something, but there's nothing to hold on to. And it feels to me like free falling. It's like, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, when is this free falling going to stop? Because uh, get, get, get there's fear in that. And then I feel like I go into that. And I can't function then properly. I, 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 it's like the focus and tension is, the intention should just be inside and not on the outside world. And we are sometimes so focused on the outside world. But when I go through that, it's like there's a renewal of energy. There's a renewal of focus. And things just flow then much quicker. I, I seem to be systemized. I, I seem to be able to wash my dishes <laughs> and do my house is tidy and everything finds its place. But it, what happens on the inside is a reflection on what's on the outside. And what happens on the outside is a reflection on the inside. Um, adding to, to that, um, I found this week that, um, and some messages that came through, with this um, upheaval in Senegal and the whole of South Africa, um, I got a message that we are to pray for the farmers in Senegal. No, we didn't have to pray for the, a specific group of people. We had to send our light into 
these areas and the whole of South Africa, in fact, the whole of the world. It is at a point where everybody's having a fight with everybody else. And again, we come back to being the balance. Yes. And I was asked to help uh, a family member with a conflict that um, she was having with the clients. And I told her to go in and because we are all one, God would be speaking to God and therefore she would only hear God. So I kept sending light and this to the situation and suddenly the voice said to me, you've already asked, don't keep asking. <laughs> because <laughs> we've done what you've asked us to do. Yeah. So don't mm. nag and nag and nag. They have gone in and been with the situation and leveled it out and balanced it. And I saw the same with all the sub people in Seneca. I saw the beat. In fact, in my heart of hearts, I saw the masters walking amongst the lot. And it reminded me of when uh, Jesus walked through the crowd and they were being stoned. And suddenly, they, they never saw him. And it reminded me of a situation many years ago when I was taking my daughter to school and I had to drive through a place where they were pulling people out of their cars and they were being stoned and you name it. And I drove through this <laughs> and it was like they never saw me. And this is what can happen. We don't have to, we can, don't go looking for trouble, but we are so protected if we let us be protected that we can walk through these situations without it affecting us. Mm. And I think this is something we've got to bear with now. Uh, we don't have to be part of the, the warring factors. We can be the balance. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating how spirit works and they bring everything together because I Last night, they just uh, told me, okay, this uh, um, is the chapter that we're going to read. And I didn't put two and two together. And when we drew the cards, it's like, then I could understand why the cards pertain to this. <laughs> and we each drew a different card. So it's uh, it's amazing. And uh, that the news, uh, that this is on the news and that the news has been um, in our forefront and um, uh, attention. And that is uh, the thing about intention. So many times uh, um, when I've attended other breakthrough experiences and stuff, they say, whatever we give focus on grows. So if uh, there's an activist group that focuses on, um, uh, say for instance, women abuse and rape, we give that attention and uh, more of that happens. If uh, we focus on um, violence against this group, we give that attention and more of that happens and it comes up because we're sending attention there. And what Beryl says now is, is, is very valuable because it is, okay, so what intention is we, are we sending there? Is it that we see them as victims? Because if you see any group, any part of the civilization as victims, you make them a victim. It's like you put a target on their back. Not that we want to. The intention of the groups is, is not that, but because they give it so much focus, it becomes that. And then they say, see, the numbers have increased. See, this is true. And they make, I'm gonna say, the thing that they don't want to be the truth, more truthful. And it is to, to do it in a different way. So if, if, if we don't change it and see them as, hey, they are important, they stand in the light, and they are powerful, they can do. I'm not denying that things happen. Things happen on this earth plane. 
and it happens to each group. No group is exemplified from that. There's the, there's no one that that uh, that nothing bad happens to. Bad happens to the, the whole spectrum of, of of things. But as soon as we make oh only these ones are suffering, let's just, only these lives matter. Only these ones is now we must only focus on this now. And it's a, uh, like both of them said, it's a, uh, like, just come back. How does spirit see it? It's like send light, send love to the, those, because uh, I said, uh, uh, house divided um, falls. And we can't. We need to come together. We need to come together and see things uh, from a higher vantage point. Just shower it with love. The one side isn't right and the other side isn't wrong. There's a, there, 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 there's a third way that Okay, they need love. They, they, they need to feel safe. Can we hold space for feeling safe? Can we feel safe within us? Because we first have to foster the feelings on the inside and then send those feelings on the outside and share that with others. But not getting trapped with that. Not go and get angry about that. Not give the, the one pole more attention and energy. It's like when we pull out one of those arrows, Shoot to, I want to say, up. <laughs> so that the wisdom and the blessings can come back down. Um, it's just to be aware. Uh, and when it depends on what frequency we are, that's why it says, as you become aware of who, what is going on collectively, it is a reflection on what is going on on the microscopic level. So lots of people are... Going through those town moments of the card that we drew, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and, uh, which is also the energy of October. So on the inside, there's a lot of shattering. I've had this whole week, I've had heart palpitations uh, and uh, headaches and stuff. So I'm go I, I, it feels like things are doing that on the inside of me as well. It's like things are from sending and moving. And I don't always understand it. I just hold my heart and just think, okay, so it's going through whatever it needs to go through. Um, uh, other life workers I've seen, is, uh, one of them is also in hospital for heart things. But it's like we, we are experiencing these things because it's part of the cleansing, because it's a part of the transcending. It's a, and it's a, um, the, the, the Shiva card is rise up and take the steps upward. It's like there's always a way out. We don't have to sit in the, the entrapment of the lower energies. You'll just raise your hands when you want to say anything or add anything there. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so remember, you're, um, you operate under the law of attraction and reflection. That's another thing that I thought of this morning. Before I get, um, start this at times, it's like uh, as if spirit gives me <laughs> clues. Last night I told Beryl, I'm already uh, receiving a satsang from spirit and it's like, it's like, okay, you need to talk about this stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, 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 the law of attraction and, and the reflection. And again, in the garden, a message that I got is, okay, so we magnetize situations towards us. We are a certain vibration and we magnetize others uh, to come into our environment uh, to be mirrors, to show us certain things. And if we don't like that mirroring effect, stop magnetizing it. And it comes back to our uh, focus and intention. Okay, so what magnets do we want to become? What do we want to attract into our life, in, a, uh, in our situations, in our environment, in our experiences? Because we can choose to no longer want to magnetize the, the experiences that no longer serves us and makes us feel good. And that's why we have to move out of certain circles. Um, I, I, you can still be friends with them, but then you're vibrating at a lower level. And you get, I, I personally cannot stay in that environment for too long I've, I've just got to get out um i need to be in circles like this where 
circle, squares, whatever we want to call it, um, <laughs> where people are vibrating at a level to, and I find it's like filling my tank with petrol for yes. the week so I can carry on <laughs> and um, get all the bonus points with it, you, you, you know, instead of running dry. Yeah. So, and I can get, talking to a few people there this week, I realized that, that many are spiritually hungry because they, they don't, they're mm -hmm. not, okay, it's like there's certain ones that, that um, feed your soul. And it's very important to ha touch base with, with ones that makes you feel that way. Um, so, yes. Yes, many, at, when we were at Varsity, I got that picture in a meditation of this is what the drought is, and I focused on Africa, oh, yeah. South Africa in particular, is a spiritual hunger. It's 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 a spiritual drought. It's not a a physical drought. It's and this is what they all clamoring for is feed me, mm. and they need spiritual food more than. Um, but it's their lessons to learn. It's not, uh, as Crown said, don't go and give them a Crown book. We've got to, <laughs> we've got to be on our own journeys, you know. But I think this is the biggest thing: is a spiritual um, drought, for lack of a better word. The picture that also comes to me is a. Uh, um, uh, about uh, when we in uh, uh, I was teaching a spiritual protection and putting a silver bubble of light around you. And then um, I taught this one that the barrel does everything she follows it down with her tea with full faith and conviction. And just tell them the two examples of uh, the, 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 the Car bumping in the, the um, when your brother was also in the car, and then there was no scratch on the car. Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when these things happen, they come and they go and whatever. <laughs> the the one was we were parked in Hillcrest, and I went into this particular shop, and this car just drove into reversed into my car. And my brother said to him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm a Christian. Well, yes, okay. So you're a Christian, you can you can do this. And apparently it was quite a hard bump. And I went there and I wasn't perturbed when I was told. And there wasn't a scratch on my car. And then another time I was in Cato Ridge, I had gone to um, take somebody, they wanted something in Cato Ridge, and I was parked there, it was at a Christmas time, and um, there was, when I arrived there, there were a lot of police vans and all kinds of race, but they just vanished out of sight, and um, I was reversing out and there was a lot of shouting going on and everything else. And I stopped the car. Now, not getting racist now, we were the only two white people there. Everyone else was, and there was much carrying on. And I got out of the car and I honestly felt no fear whatsoever. And I said, and what's your problem? And he said to me, you've just bumped my car. So I said, no, I haven't. Yes, you have, and you've damaged the engine, and there was a lot of shouting. So I said to him, I've got a red car that is extremely dusty at the moment, and you've got a white car, and I see no red on your car, and my car's not scraped or anything, so what's your problem? No, but you've damaged the engine and there was much shouting. And I just looked at him and I said to him, and why are you being so ugly? 
Well, you've never seen anybody's face drop so <laughs> it was totally. <laughs> so I said to him, do you mind moving your car now so that I can get out? And uh, he said, no, there's plenty of room. I said, okay. So I got in my car and, yeah, he was showing me <laughs> out. And it, the whole attitude had changed because there was no aggression from my side. I was not afraid because fear would have crept in. Um, and here I went off on my way. I've never heard or seen it from him again. But there he was showing me out. If I had got out and reacted as we are inclined to, what the hell do you think you're doing? It would have been a totally different situation. So those are just some of the things that happen, and they happen on a daily basis, and we don't even realize that this is taking place. It becomes part of our life. The, the, your, one of the most uh, profound stories also was uh, when uh, your family uh, was shot at in the car. Oh, yeah. My son-in-law was um, shot at by um, some guys in a car. That, uh, and when that whole week as you've been uh, practicing uh, spiritual protection. Yes. That which I teach, but also then uh, doing it for her family. And uh, the bullet went through the windscreen, which would have hit him in the, in the head. But as it went through the windscreen, it literally fell onto the dashboard. Now, take it from where you like, <laughs> <laughs> this happens. And things are divinely, um, miracles are divinely natural. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be, uh, only so-and-so can have them. My son-in-law doesn't think like I do. That's mm -hmm. beside the point. But we can all be protected. Yes. And at all times, yes, at times we get thrown. The other day... I was thrown for a good few hours when suddenly we were told that there'd been a break in again in the park and we haven't had this for years and I was thrown. Oh, how can you? Yeah. Calm down, center yourself, cover yourself with light, cover the park with light and let it, let it be. So we all have these, yeah. So it, it, the reason I wanted uh, Beryl just to share those stories is because when we do our spiritual protection, when we protect ourselves in the silver bubble, our house or our cars or our loved ones, they are protected. There's nothing ever to fear. It's not to fall for the stories and think that you will become or that uh, one of the victim statuses. It's stand in your truth, stand in your life, do the protection, and you will be protected. It's like um, God takes care of its own. It's like when you walk with that knowingness, and you carry it in your now, like Vanessa says. Carry that in the now. Do it in the now. Then um, there's nothing to worry for. It's not to fall for anything that others tell you. Okay. So to continue, <laughs> If something is uh, not in alignment uh, with you in any way, shape, or form, you will probably never hear about it. And uh, if you do, it uh, will have uh, um, uh, it will not have any effect on you. And that's why I, I, I keep uh, got the reminder: we have to get to that neutrality where there's no chemical charge or emotional charge about that because when there's emotional charge we need to release that emotional charge within ourselves the last time we felt that way or the last time um, we experienced that wherever it is still resonating within self release that clear that so that you don't become a magnet of that because we 
It's like Beryl said, it's like we are God, the others is God, so we can only hear God. Okay, it's, we operate from that, so that, that is what, you bring me that. You bring me the purity, you bring me truth, you bring me that. You, I, I don't resonate with others and I won't hear that. So then you get to understand what people are saying without them physically saying it because you can feel the energy that they actually bring and they accept nothing else but neutrality. I'm not going to act like you act. I'm not going to do like you do. And if it's a devil, I... No. It's, okay. Yes, I'm having a little bit of a moment here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, thinking of the bubble of protection and uh, mm -hmm. how much value it it is or how valuable it is and how I don't always remember it. Um, so yes, thank you. Good, thank you. And if you do, it, uh, it will not have any effect on you. It is important, uh, the important piece to take away when watching or reading the news is an awareness of your judgments. Um, where your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and when it comes to the story, if you are feeling angry, frustrated, or even apathetic, it is a, an opportunity for you to do some inner work to let go of any fears or low vibrational thoughts that you are carrying. Everything is uh, just bring focus back to you. So let us give, a, give you an example. Perhaps you heard in the news a story about uh, bankers and even thought uh, you are not directly involved in the situation. You feel yourself becoming activated or angry. Uh, you feel that you don't have any control or power over what is going on. We would like to say, where else uh, do you feel powerless? Where is the scenario being played out in your life? Where in your life do you feel like a victim? We guarantee you that uh, you are playing out uh, this game in multiple areas of your own life. Your reaction to the story is an indication that uh, the programs are there. Now, be uh, because of the reflection, you have an opportunity to identify the frequency and integrate that. It's transcended, transmuted, as one of the cards said. Look carefully at how that belief or thought serves you. So sometimes uh, um, we hold on to the stuff that we shouldn't hold on to, and uh, we think it's serving us, but it's uh, not. When you recognize that the pattern, you can then shift it. Maybe at another time in your life, this thought or pattern did serve you and kept you safe, but it is not serving you any longer. If this is the case, are you willing to let it go? An awareness uh, such as a uh, this is uh, uh, the difference between a being in the driver's seat vibrationally or being on automatic pilot. It's just to check in, are you um, on autopilot, uh, reactive or not in the now as um, Vanessa was saying, uh, because uh, then we sometimes uh, uh, miss it. When you see the service of any thought, pattern or belief, you move out of the victim persecutor mentality and move, move into the co-creator level of awareness. So the message of, that I get from this is nobody's a victim. Nobody ever is a victim. And when you, are, when you have an emotional charge about hearing about other victims, so there's still a level of victim mentality running in your life be it at a subconscious level, be it a deep pattern, so be it a default zone, be it wherever it is. And when we transcend that, we can only send, only see people as standing in their power, um, rising victoriously, 
because steps are shown there for us to arise victoriously. Um, it's like people with disabilities. If you watch certain movies, they'll be in a wheelchair or they'll have whatever disability there is. And other people will um, come to them and say, oh, shame. Oh, how are you coping living with the, in these conditions? And they don't necessarily see themselves as um, uh, having a disability or whatever. They, uh, they've accepted where they are and the interactions that they have. So we don't serve another to see them as victims or as disabled, uh, sometimes more uh, they're more abled. More abled and uh, the abled ones are ain't actually the one with the disability <laughs> because they, they don't have the ability to see the perfection in that. And it's so it is so, um, just to be aware. Something that came now was shouting at me during our session the other day. Um, we were talking about corruption, but corruption can be our corrupt thinking. Yes. That was a big one. It was a very big one. <laughs> it, it, it's not necessary what we see out here. We pick up the corrupt thinking and it corrupts our lives. So we need to again, come into balance, not pick up all this, the garbage that's been put out, because corruption is a big thing at the moment. Mm. And we don't realize we are all part of the so-called problem because mm. we pick up on the corrupt thinking. Mm. Yeah. When you do this, you let go of uh, the attachment or judgment it immediately happens. It is uh, um, only in the, the mindset of the victim persecutor that the judgment can exist. At a co-creator level, all are acceptable experiences. They aren't good or bad. There is not one that is better to have over another. As co-creators, you all sought out the experienced these varied frequencies and roles. The news is only an opportunity to identify where the collective consciousness is vibrating. Again, you are not bound to play out the frequency of the collective consciousness. You can hold your own unique frequency but if you feel charged in any way, it means uh, that you still have work to do. You are not a victim. It's a very powerful message. Very, 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 very powerful message. Remember when you shift your frequency, you holographically transmit the information on how it was done to the collective consciousness. Others uh, may then access this information if they choose. You uh, give people um, who are struggling assistance and reassurance uh, that can be done by simply being the living example. So what I get from that is like when the collective plays so this there's victims, yeah, there's victims, yeah. We need to focus on these victims. We need to give all the attention on the victims, see how they are victimized, see how more the victims are being victimized, so see how this group are more being victimized. When all this focus is, when you have a neutral perspective uh, from source, from uh, the Holy Spirit, from uh, a higher vantage point, and uh, you, you see perfection in uh, the whole game playing out, not making uh, judgments, not picking sides, just uh, holding the balance. You are putting that knowledge of how to relate to that situation out there for others that I don't want to feel like a victim. I don't want to feel this um, like anger. I don't want to feel this energy. How else can it be done? And it's like the more of us that put that neutral neutrality out there, 
the more others can move into the neutrality and not be charged by that. But just show a love for both sides. And that's a, um, the thing that we got to in one of the, our satsangs is when I, in meditation, could have, could only show those, I'm going to say, persecutors of love and light in their life because I know at what level they are vibrating to be able to act, enact from that. And it's like by sending them angry energy, like Beryl said, if you respond to a, a situation with anger, you're going to get a whole different uh, uh, perspective because they, it just fuels that anger. It's like, well, I'm fine. So just don't go there. One of the major issues uh, that you may see in the, the news involves around the area of competition. The third dimensional perspective says uh, that it is uh, either this or it is that. This is a uh, uh, one or the other. Our country wins a war and the other loses. You either have uh, prosperity or you have luck with nothing in between. These stories uh, keep you in the separation. What we encourage you to understand is uh, it is uh, not about either or, but rather and. The universe is infinitely abundant uh, and there, there is uh, no limitation or lack except that which is self-imposed. You can have uh, your own beliefs uh, without the need of another's to conform. All can succeed and flourish. When you move into the higher frequencies of awareness, you see that everyone has uh, the possibility to thrive. There are no victims. Many of you can get frustrated though, when you hear us say this. You say, why would anyone choose a poverty, war, or famine? How could they choose this particular version of reality? The reason is simple. They wanted to explore a frequency. So it's to have no judgment for them to wanting to explore that frequency. Honor them for their choice as a divine being of light. Hold them in the wisdom that uh, they may choose to see themselves uh, from a higher perspective. You can send them energy encoded with the knowledge that uh, they can choose to increase uh, their frequency and experience more love. Ascension is not a requirement. If others do not wish to awaken, it does not tie them into that reality. You experience uh, that reality because that is your choice. When you decide to move up of the mode of victim persecutor, you can create a life of joy, abundance, and expansion no matter what the collective uh, may be choosing. And we'll end there today. Anybody would like to add anything or what you take away from what we've discussed this morning? Yes. Absolutely, I'm not on mute. Yeah. Um, it was very fitting. Um, because of the news, I I was quite upset last week with this whole cynical thing, and I it was it was just getting me down. And then I decided at the beginning of the week that it it's going to work out. Um, I just will not even for a moment consider the the worst case scenario. And everybody was uh, I've watched something on, on Facebook and everybody just said, let's just pray. And on Friday, my whole family was like on tenter hooks and I just said, leave it alone. I don't want to know anything. I don't want you to tell me what's going on on Twitter because it, it's not in my life. 
it's in my life, everybody's keeping a cool head, everything is fine. And yes, um, I brought, I feel like I brought that into my experience. Um, and I would not allow anything else to, to play itself out. Yes. Of course, being on holiday for that week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, uh, so, so some people can be on a holiday and they still fear that because mm. they, 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 they don't concentrate on work. So it's like, where can I have something to worry about? Where can I go? Uh, it's all drama. my, yeah, you know, I have some drama because they are fixated on the drama, the intentions and drama. They shift from one drama to another drama and feed off that energy, not realizing that it's not serving them, but they, they get so charged by that. Uh, but it's a, it's a habit and pattern. And if you look inside, if they just they turn uh, it as a mirror and look inside and say, okay, so I need to become peaceful within. I need to hold that vibration of peace. I need to just see things differently. So it's a beautiful that you've had a, a first-hand experience mm. of seeing the benefits for yourself mm. by taking a neutral vantage point and not... Um, respond like others do because we don't have to respond like others do way showers are the ones that, that do what the others are not doing <laughs> it's usually the opposite uh, than what uh, the collective and the uh, the norm is and it's not that you don't care it's because you care that's why you can i just add something as well just in terms of sort of summarizing it all with all the stuff that goes on around us, if we can stay focused on on the light, on the neutral, on on spirit in the situation, you know, earlier it really uh, struck a chord with me when Beryl said, um, in the conflict situation, God will speak to God you know don't you don't need to bring your sort of your voice of human frailty of anger and and resentment and and all of that just just allow the light to be in you and you know tying that into the transcending of those negative emotions those charges and keeping the focus the intentional focus from Beryl's card on the light constantly. If we just wake up in the morning with the intention of whatever happens today, I'm going to just stay focused on the lighter side of things that happen rather than the shadow sides, on that 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 lighter energy that that um, is a greater reflection of how you perceive spirit and how you experience spirit. And then going to what Vanessa was saying about the power of now, that if you, if you, if you starting and ending your day with that intentional focus on, I'm going to just keep looking at the light. I'm just going to keep looking at the light. I'm just going to keep focused on the good. Um, that, that power of now, if you're staying if your nows are always staying with that vision on on that apex on that light, that's where you know that that, that there's power in that. So our own power in the situation to continue to keep focused on the good, the power for for that negativity to resolve. Um, there's just so much richness in everything that we see today and everything tying up. Uh, it's just been really, really good to hear it all and to hear everybody's interpretations of it and examples of it. It just makes it very real and practical. So thank you. It's been good. Thank you. It's a beautiful summary. May I just add to no. what Maria says? Shame. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Speak now, and hold your peace. I will. <laughs> um, when you focus on that, don't blame yourself for being human um, and you haven't done what you are professing to do because we're all human.
and we forget that. So don't beat yourself up when you forget. Because you can always pick it up again. Oh, okay, I forgot this time, but I can pick it up and change the situation. Because we do beat ourselves up um, when we don't do as we profess to be. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we always did as we profess to want to be, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're here because. Yeah. Got to keep. So we can learn from, from each other. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys then ready for the guided meditation? I want you now just to prepare for the guided meditation. Closing your eyes and breathing in deeply and exhaling fully. With each in breath, taking in the, the new levels of consciousness and awareness that is available to you in this now. And with each out breath, release all that no longer serves you in order for you to be shining lighter and lighter, brighter and brighter. And just allow this tone, this vibration, this frequency to go in, through, and around your body as you just relax with slow, deep breaths. Wherever you hold any disharmonious energies within you, and specifically you to the news, so just detach, release and let go of all those energies now, breathe it out, breathe it out, breathe it out, let it go, set it free, let it be. Thirdly, surrender and release in this moment in time. Thank you. Taking into a deeper level of peace and relaxation with full awareness. Now, I want you just uh, to visualize yourself now once again uh, stepping into a most beautiful garden forest area. Your peace of sanctuary, serenity, neutrality. And just breathe in the, the beautiful energies and frequencies that, that is available within this beautiful nature setting. I want you to venture through this beautiful nature to a place uh, that you would like to go and sit at. Bed within the cave of a mountain, or on top of the mountain, or by the river, or by the sea, or amongst uh, the huge trees, or wherever you choose to today, go there. Find yourself now sitting comfortably within your sacred space. Breathing in the peace, uh, breathing in the harmony. Breathing in there, these beautiful energies.
you know, and you know, just uh, to become aware of uh, any place in your life and your experiences and your thought forms and your belief systems uh, where there's a division or possibly even at war with yourself or wondering why wherever there's a judgment about a situation and experiences on this earth plane that confuses you or any confusion within yourself, any dividedness, I want all those memories, thought forms, belief systems to come to the surface now, to become aware of that. Those divided thoughts, divided uh, beliefs, divided feelings, This is personal for each of you. This allows spirit now to bring them all to the surface, to your memory, to the foreground. Telepathically, seeing of the visions, feeling the feelings. This is a time for introspection, only focusing on self. Or if it has been outside, bringing it back to self. And then I invite you now to transcend this. I invite you to take it uh, to the third point of neutrality, the space of the Holy Ghost, seeing it from a higher vantage point. Each of the, the lower vibrational feelings, uh, experiences, thought forms, A victimhood was triggered within you. Transcend that. If safety and security issues uh, was triggered, transcend that. If blame or guilt uh, was triggered, transcend that. If feelings of being powerless was triggered, transcend that. If heartache and pain was triggered, transcend that. If corruption or lies uh, was triggered, uh, transcend that.
avails of illusion is still triggered, uh, transcend that. If your attachment to the lower dimensional frequency is, uh, is still being triggered, uh, transcend that. If there's anything in your life uh, that uh, trans uh, bears, uh, or reveals to you any level of self-sabotage, transcend that. Or what we do to another, we do to ourselves. Wherever there's been an excessive emotional charge for you in the past day, week, month, or this year, transcend uh, that emotionally charged experience, thought form that has become your belief system. Whatever judgment uh, you've made uh, about uh, this year or your life, transcend that wherever you feel yourself uh, being stuck. Stuck in the mud, stuck in the quicksand, uh, being absorbed by the collective consciousness uh, and where they go. Transcend that. I want you now to become aware of uh, the stairway, the step that the spirit uh, has always uh, had for you on what your focus should be. Following uh, the divine teacher within yourself. that has always known your way, your path, your truth. Asking uh, that uh, the highest uh, teacher and guide that is within you now, step forward and take your hand. And I want you to walk together up these steps, leaving the past behind, the past you, the past way of thinking, feeling, acting and reacting. Becoming lighter and lighter, shining brighter and brighter. raising yourself down to higher levels in frequencies and awareness and consciousness. And as you get to the top, I want you just to step through 
be it the archway, be it the door, whatever it is, step through. I want you to become aware of all that is possible for you, all that is available to you. Allowing yourself now to become a magnet of all this, all that is possible, all that is available. Allow your internal magnets to switch on to be at the, this vibrational frequency. Whatever judgments you have uh, ever made uh, that has prevented yourself from magnetizing this into your life, just detached and transmute uh, that judgments. Whatever comes to mind now, wherever you've stood in your way for this, for these experiences. Dear Bo, and transmuted. Let this be your now, your focused intention. And if uh, during uh, the day, the week, uh, the month, uh, you feel yourself dropping down, stand up and rise up again. Step into this now moment more frequently. Don't allow others uh, to draw them into their chaos, into their drama. Know this to be your truth. Feel the total utter peace and tranquility that's uh, within you the harmony, the serenity, the neutrality. Acknowledge within you that you are creator with the source of all that is. Claiming back your power, standing in your magnificence, standing in your truth. Was your head held high?
humble and at peace. With total openness. And full allowance. I'm creating your heaven on earth. I'm asking uh, that uh, your team reveal themselves now to you. Walking beside you, in front of you, and behind you. Being in tune with uh, these masters, teachers, and guides. Becoming one with your divine. I am present. One with your inner child. One with all parts of you. Totally integrate the whole you. Choosing to feel, think, experience, act and react from your I am presence. at all times. And in the, the sense of oneness and wholeness and completeness. Gently descend, 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 back into your body, back into this now. And then I want you just to visualize the most beautiful silver golden bubble of light coming in all around you. See it coming down the front of your body, the back of your body, the left side and the right side of your body and gently tuck beneath your feet, two feet below you. Now visualize the grounding cord, any color of your choosing, which take deep down into the earth, into the crystal heart of mothers. And wrap your grounding cord around the crystal of your choosing. Feel those crystalline energies coming back up your grounding cord and into your silver golden bubble of light, recharging, revitalizing and re-energizing your new energy and frequency and your cellular structure to adjust there to these new frequencies. It's vital that you drink lots of water today following this meditation. And slowly rotate your hands, rotate your feet, stretch and make sure that you're properly back into your body. And when you are, you may open your eyes. Hello, hello. <laughs> you're all back. So who would like to share what they've experienced in meditation? Anyone? Are you feeling? I think we are all just Yeah, it was very, for me, I just went very, very deep. I felt very far away. Um, and I, some stuff that I, We came, that came up in our sessions last week um, 
surprised by one or two little things, but different my perspectives of them uh, felt like some of those were were shifted, um, but saw some new ones that needed attention and yeah, quite quite significant. I felt that that was very deep. There was a lot of work going on there. So thank you for that. Very, very powerful. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Barbara. Um, yeah. I Sorry, I, I haven't been able to unmute myself until now because I lost you guys. And so I'm trying to work Zoom from my phone, which I'm not too familiar with. Um, I thought it was a wonderful meditation and I couldn't stop thinking about the importance of what people were saying about the how you make someone a victim by seeing them as a victim. It just kept coming up in my meditation and how we make ourselves feel like victims by seeing ourselves as victims also. So, yeah, that, that was just going through my mind during meditation. I also went very deep, felt a lot of peace, and I didn't really have anything to release. It was just, I felt like I had released, um, I've released a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I didn't really feel I needed to release anything. I just felt completely at peace and, and, and joy, you know, because when you have no negative emotions, it makes room for positive emotions that make you feel good, so. Thank you. It was lovely. Thanks. Thank you. Anything you'd like to end off with? I had a wonderful time. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as the meditation started, I saw the pictures. Most countries are divided by a river. And because you are on one side of the river and I'm on the other, we often have to fight about something. <laughs> and the river runs as purely neutral in between these countries. It's you are not good and you are not good. You, I am just a neutral force. And the river runs or flows to the sea. We, all the angers that have been put on boats onto the river from either side is taken to the sea where the water is so vast that it is neutralized. Mm -hmm. And salt is a good antibiotic or neutralizer or whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. And so all this anger is... Um, neutralize and th this is again the the peak of the of the triangle where the the angers the hurts the even the loves are put into the boat and can go across the river and let it just be neutralized and then I saw the masters, the masters are, and have been around here, lots of them. Um, but it seemed to be like there were three on one side and three on the other, and then three in the middle. So it's just a, a, a joining. And then went through the gates, whatever. I went through the... The, the crown chakra. <laughs> so I went through there and it was just pure light, um, neutral, just energy. And then I finished there and the meditation was still going on. <laughs> and um, I opened my eyes and there's a little dustbin here with a silver lid. And it was swaying away, just neutral, just balancing everything. And I thought, well, there's the message there in the dustbin. 
it's a, yes, <laughs> that was my, I feel such peace and, yes, um, it, it, it was wonderful. I really enjoyed and thank you all for your company because it makes a world of difference. Thank you. What's your parting message? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, a lot of personal growth happened here. Um, I, I have a lot of, or I, well, I had a lot of fear for those I'm leaving behind here. Um, my two children and my dog. <laughs> me and that dog um, so I just realized all the attachments I'm, I, what, I, I had them in bubbles of protection and I was holding it like a bunch of balloons so I was tethering them to me and they couldn't fly and they, I need to let them go so that they are in the bubble of protection and they're going to be fine but I can't keep them back and for my own good as well for my own enjoyment of this whole new part of my life if if i don't let that go that attachment go um, i'm going to be unhappy so i've got to yes and then there was this dog barking so it was my <laughs> dog just talking to me every time i i, I felt him the dog barked so oh. i was yes i was feeling very close to my baby um yes and then at the end, when you were gonging the gong, my mouth started twitching. It was the weirdest thing. And it just, I was like the joker. And every time the gong went, it just, and I was smiling. Um, it was weird, but I was quite happy. Uh, awesome. <laughs> it was big. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. I've been asked to give you a pair of scissors of love oh, to wow. cut the cords. Thank you. I need that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and I also felt that they're very peaceful. Um, uh, yeah, just um, just very aware and very present. Um, and loved all the messages that, that came through. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing how everything comes together and just you get a, a new sense of a, awareness and, oh, okay, yes, this is what my attention should be on. Okay, yes, I can do this. So I've, I've, I'm very in a, in a much better space now. I love this space. Oh, is that what I thought? Yeah. Where was it swaying? Beryl was showing me because the wind is swaying the the, um, dust the dustbin's lid, and it's uh, going like this. Because so, I thought it's static. Like, where was it moving? But now I see it. Does it spirit it? <laughs> waking you up waking us up <laughs> everything is in balance everything is absolutely perfect. it's balancing perfectly yes hmm. and then it's neutral hmm. so whatever sways in your life this week let it sway and be on the swing but have no emotional attachment to either because uh, it will settle down and uh, have a positive expression about that, that settle down energy is like okay, this is showing me things are shifting. Okay, but there's it. I'll it will be replaced with something good or better. Um, don't to focus on anything else but that. And we are you know, the the Aquarian age is all about creating now win-win situations. It's, as the book said, it's like in the past there was a winner and a loser, and nobody has to be a loser. You don't have to see yourself losing anything. It is. What are you winning in the process? The doggy will win another new home that will create love <laughs> and affection and attention and it will give you freedom of exploration and so forth. And as long as he's so uh, taken care of and loved, and uh, he, he might have signed up for a two man contract, you mm. did the first phase, <laughs> and it's to trust uh, that. He will, he will, you will be replaced by something like you or better. Mm. And, um, and do that, everything that we do in love, give over and surrender in love. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Go. Wish you all a magical week. Bye-bye. And thank you. Go. Go, well, everyone. Thank Go. you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.